can you do a cat? How about a chicken? <laughs> and what about a rooster? <laughs> Very good. <laughs>
Now, unlike rainforest macaws, the hyacinths prefer the arid grasslands of Brazil and Bolivia, where they feed mostly on palm nuts, which are kind of like a miniature coconut. But that massive beak of theirs, which has 750 pounds per square inch bite force, is able to break those open without any problem. All right, now there are over 9,000 species of birds on our planet occupying every single continent. And all of them are direct descendants of dinosaurs. And here at World of Birds, we're proud to have recently trained the closest living relative to the T-Rex. Everyone remain calm. Don't make eye contact. Here he comes. Isn't he majestic? That is Earl, our rooster. <laughs> And it's true, chickens are one of the closest living relatives to the T-Rex. Dinosaur, scientists believe that as dinosaurs got smaller and smaller, that became a precursor for flight. And while Earl there doesn't eat much meat or have sharp talons, many other species of birds do. Like this next one, for example, our African serpent eagle, known as a battalore. Now battalore spend most of their time on the wing covering up to 250 square miles in a single day. They're known for their unusual flight patterns and acrobatics, which include 360 degree loops, barrel rolls, and a side-to-side -side rocking action that helps them steer. In fact, this is how the Battler Eagle gets its name, which in French means acrobat or street performer. Now, battlers are listed as a species of concern, and biologists are monitoring their populations closely to determine just how concerned we should be. Now, I did mention that Azuri is a serpent eagle, meaning he's a bird that likes to eat snakes. By a show of hands, are any of you afraid of snakes out there? All right, well, not to fear, our next bird has got your back. This here is Abe, our Abyssinian ground hornbill. And he is going to demonstrate exactly what he would do if an errant snake wandered on stage. Watch closely as he grabs it right behind the head, gives it a hard chomp and a good shake. If there were a living snake, that would prevent him from getting bit. Now, Abyssinian ground hornbills are very clever. They're known for uh, using that big beak of theirs to tear into honeycomb and to break open hollow logs to find insects. They've also been seen hanging out on the edges of wildfires, and as animals flee from the flames, they end up running right into the jaws of the Abyssinian ground hornbill. He knows that's his one way to get a hot meal out in Africa. Now, some of the largest and most magnificent of the raptors are the eagles, hatched right here at the Los Angeles Zoo 16 years ago. This is Nima. Any moment now. <laughs> Our African fish eagle. There she is. Now she may look familiar to you. African fish eagles are closely related to the national bird you saw a moment ago, our American bald eagle. And both species hunt primarily fish. They have special calluses on the bottoms of their feet that allow them to capture slippery prey right off the surface of the water. Nima's going on a little adventure right now. <laughs> I did mention it's a free flight bird show, but she'll get back on track in just a moment. Like I mentioned, she's been doing this show for 16 years. She's an old hat. Now, fish eagles will occasionally prey upon larger species, even sometimes flamingos. And they can be found throughout Southern Africa, where their loud and unpredictable call that can be heard for miles has earned them the title, the Voice of Africa. <laughs> now, just as the bald eagle is our national bird, the fish eagle is the national bird of several South African countries, including Zimbabwe. Now, so far, you have seen the beauty of parrots in flight, the stealth of a giant owl, and the grace of a few eagles. Are you guys ready for some action? Yeah. All right, I think that's a resounding yes. All right, our next raptor is going to be demonstrating some of the aerobatic prowess that he possesses for the hunt, specifically incredible speed, vision, and agility. Joining us now is Dimitri, who's going to be launching a small leather lure high up into the sky, simulating a bird in flight and giving us just a glimpse of our 
Paris Hawk's amazing hunting ability. So without further ado, from the top of the hillside behind me, this is Flash. <laughs> extensive list of species that these guys eat. They'll also go after ground-dwelling mammals, even burrowing mammals. These guys will actually chase rabbits into their burrow and continue the hunt underground. But perhaps what Harris hawks are most well known for is the social aspect of their lifestyle. Harris hawks are group hunters and they'll take turns pursuing the same prey item which they will then share. This has earned them the very cool nickname, the Wolves of the Sky. Well, Harris Hawks are native to the U.S., but you would have to travel east to the deserts to find them. And it may be hard to believe that there was once a massive bird that dominated the skies of California for 35,000 years. I am talking about the California condor. And now we have a very special experience for you. It's our pleasure to introduce you to our California condor, Hope. Now, over the last two centuries, many factors drove the California condor toward extinction, most notably lead poisoning. When condors consume carcasses that have lead bullet fragments within them, the lead in their blood can reach fatal levels. By 1982, there were only 22 California condors in the entire world. Those 22 condors were the last remaining hope for the iconic species, and they became the founding members of the California Condor Recovery Program based right here at the Los Angeles Zoo. Thanks to the enormous success of that program, what was once just 22 condors has now soared to over 500. Now Hope is a five-year-old California condor that was hatched at a breeding facility in Idaho. She was destined to join a flock of wild condors in the Grand Canyon, but as a nestling, she sustained a wing injury that left her unable to soar and survive in the wild. Here at World of Birds, she now has the important job of educating guests about the power of conservation. She is living proof that if we all work together, we can save species from the brink of extinction. Thanks to the efforts of people all across the nation, there are now thriving populations of California condors throughout the western United States and down into Mexico. And the Los Angeles Zoo has done more for this species than any other institution. We continue to breed them, release them, and treat them for lead poisoning. In fact, if you look over there, you can see one of our breeding facilities. Now your visit to the zoo today directly helps protect critically endangered species like the blue throat of a cause that you saw earlier and the California condor. So give yourself an applause for supporting the Los Angeles Zoo. Thank you. Now all of the birds that you've seen here today have special roles that they play in nature. It's important for us to remember the role that we as humans must play, which is to protect our planet and all of the creatures that we share it with. So on behalf of the world of birds and of course, all of our feathered friends, I'd like to thank you for coming out today and please enjoy the rest of your day here at the great Los Angeles Zoo.